Good morning, everybody. This is Jenny Brechneider with the California Secretary of State's Office. I served as Director of the California Online Voter Registration Redesign Project, and I, I want to first thank the Future of California Elections for hosting this morning's webinar. What a fantastic idea to bring together all the partners that were involved in the redesign and our, and our partners going forward who are going to be promoting the website. I really appreciate you putting this together. So if we move to the first slide, that's slide number two. I want to just walk you through the main reasons why we redesigned the online voter registration website. The Secretary of State first built online voter registration in 2012. We got a federal grant to do it, and we built it very quickly so that we could uh, launch it right before the 2012 elections. There were certain things that we couldn't get done in that first year, and so we decided to redesign the whole website uh, for these reasons that you're seeing on the first slide. Number one was to improve accessibility. And we worked closely with CSU, um, and you're going to hear from Cheryl Pruitt at CSU more about that. Um, we decided that we wanted to provide the website in all 10 languages required under the Voting Rights Act in various California counties. We had the original website in English and Spanish, and now we have all 10 California languages. We wanted to optimize the website for mobile devices because so many people use smartphones and tablets in their everyday business, and, and especially for the voter registration groups out there, we know you're using um, mobile devices. So we want to make sure the website is usable and easily handleable with mobile devices. We wanted to add a post feature for third parties like Rock the Vote, the major parties. Uh, U.S. Postal Service has also expressed an interest in, a, in doing this. And also for our NVRA agencies, which are state and local agencies that offer voter registration under the federal law, the National Voter Registration Act. So we'll hear more from Heather Smith about their work uh, towards building their side of the post feature. But this is essentially a function that allows a group to um, uh, have a user visit their website and then have the person's data come over to our website and pre-fill the voter registration form online. So we also wanted to track and report better on the NVRA re uh, agency registration. So we set up a reporting tool and a tracking method to do that. Um, and we wanted to add some functionality for our county elections officials so that they could pull a single record at a time. Sometimes they have a need to do that. And then in general, we wanted to improve the data quality that was coming through and improve the usability of the website. And we're, we're, you're going to hear more about that in the next hour. Um, if you could move the slide, please. So I'm going to just speak really quickly here on accessibility because we do have Cheryl Pruitt with CSU with us. But generally, we rebuilt this website in collaboration with both CSU and also our Voting Accessibility Advisory Committee here at the Secretary of State's Office. Um, both of those organizations or, or, or entities were involved from design through build through testing and now in post-production reviewing the website and making sure it works properly. So we're really proud of this collaborative um, uh, process we set up to really make the, uh, the website accessible for people with all of these types of disabilities you're seeing there at the bottom of the slide. So next slide, please. So we translated it into 10 languages, but the way we did that is through a very collaborative process. We worked with several counties who had election staff who speak those languages. We worked with the Language Accessibility Advisory Committee, which is a new committee headed up by Eugene Lee, and they have language experts throughout the state. And what we did was we, of course, had to have an official translation vendor, but when we would get translations back, we would share those translations with our reviewers and get their feedback, and then send that feedback back to the vendor and make sure that we're adopting changes as we need to based on the reviewer's comments. So that, that too was a collaborative process where they were involved from the beginning and actually were able to see not just the translations but the actual test website. Uh, next page. Um, I think I've talked just a little bit about this post function, and I'm going to leave the rest up to Heather, so I think we'll skip this page. And again, this is an ability to, as a third-party entity, whether you're, again, Postal Service, a government agency that's already interacting with people like Department of Motor Vehicles, um, or, or you're a, a, an outreach group out there and you have people visiting your website, this ability to um, have the person's data come over to our website so that people don't have to fill out their data twice. Um, Good. So just quickly here, um, I'm just going to review again what are the major things we did here. Um, we, we have some disclosures on the landing page that we had last time, but they're clearer 
tells you what you need to do to register to vote. We have some really great help links at the bottom of the page that are on that are in the footer of every page. You see there web help, accessibility, privacy, and a hotline you can call for information. Um, we reduced the number of screens on this website from 19 down to 2. So it's a two-page form now, and there's a review page, and we have a progress bar. So the whole website is very usable now. We moved it into plain English as much as we could. Um, we grouped the fields logically and intuitively so that things come up, you know, questions come up as th th that make sense to be together. Um, and I'm going to speed up here because I think I have about 30 seconds. Um, and and we, uh, we hide certain fields that most people don't need, like prior registration and, and other things. And so you check a box, and then it will show the fields that you need rather than seeing this very long form on the website. So very last slide here. These are just some of the things that are coming in the future. Uh, obviously with every project you have to decide what can we do now, what can we do in the future. These are a few things you're going to be seeing with VoteCal, which is our next big build out. That's the statewide voter registration database. And I'll just highlight a couple things. You're going to be able to look up your polling place, uh, look up your ballot status for vote by mail and provisional ballots. And there will just be some hopefully some simplicity for people that move across counties. So I'll stop there, and I can certainly answer questions at the end. Thank you very much. Hmm. Great. Thank you, um, Jenny. We're going to move on and jump right into Cheryl's presentation. So Cheryl? Hi. I'm Cheryl Pruitt, Director of the Accessible Technology Initiative at the California State uh, University Office of the Chancellor. Can you go ahead and move to the next slide, please? Before we jump into the uh, accessibility features of the cover application, um, I'd just like to say that web accessibility is, Im is important to everyone, and all of our accessibility and usability work actually benefits all. And the point of web accessibility is to give the greatest number of people, regardless of the method, that, uh, the, a chance to interact with the application, regardless of how they interact with it. So there's four principles that need to be true in order for persons with disabilities to interact with the voter registration application. These principles were developed by the World Wide Web Consortium and are collectively referred to as the poor principles. The principles include perceivable. Users must be able to um, perceive the information. In other words, it can't be hidden from their senses, the text links, and form controls need to be implemented such that assistive technology can sense their presence. It has to be operable. Users have to be able to work the interface. They need to be able to operate the input controls and, and links either by keyboard or with the assistive technology or with the mouse. It also needs to be understandable. Users must be able to understand the information as well as the operation of the user interface. This includes logically organized content and clear, simple language that is easily understood. And finally, the application needs to be robust. As Jenny mentioned, many people are, are interacting with the web in many different ways, tablets, uh, smartphones, as well as assistive technology. And a robust application will work across all those platforms. So next slide, please. Some of the uh, accessibility features of the California Online Voter Registration app include Full support for keyboard-only usage, which assures that the users with mobility issues and assistive technology users will be able to operate the application. Next, accessible input controls with descriptive text labels include form fields, radio buttons, and checkboxes that are perceivable, operable, and understandable to screen reader users. Clear, concise error handling allows assistive technology users to easily find and correct errors. The extensive use of accessible, rich Internet applications known as YARIA provides robust support for assistive technology. The ARIA technology helps screen reader users easily move between regions on a page, and it also provides a way to relate more descriptive content to form controls. This was especially important in areas like the affirmation where <coughs> screen reader users are going to affirm something and they need to understand all those things they are affirming. I couldn't get this on my computer. I got it on the phone uh, and the computer. Oh, that's the, the could, a you, could you yeah. mute well, your phone, please? I can hear it. Um, finally, structural markup like headings and lists that clearly conveys page structure logical grouping of questions and streamlined navigation coupled with consistent page 
um, uh, consistent across all the pages. It's consistent. Gives the application a high degree of usability for everyone. Uh, next slide, please. As Jenny mentioned, we built accessibility into this application using a collaborative design and development process where accessibility and usability were considered during each phase of the project. Accessibility requirements were developed, usability and technical accessibility recommendations were made during each phase of the development process. Several rounds of usability and accessibility testing were conducted, which included both standards, uh, conformance, and assistive technology testing. Next slide, please. Finally, the CSU is able to work with outside entities, in this case the Secretary of State's office, to um, do these types of evaluations and give accessibility advice because we've established the Accessible Technology Network. This leverages the uh, accessibility expertise in our system and allows us to share that expertise with um, many other uh, entities. We've done private consultations as well as these state ones. So if you have questions or would like any more information about the network or about accessibility in general, you can email us at ati at calstate.edu. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Cheryl. And we're going to just jump right into our next presenter, Heather Smith with Rock the Vote. Great. Thank you. Um, so hello, everyone. This is Heather from Rock the Vote. And I wanted to talk today a little bit about some of the tools and technologies um, that we've built in conjunction with the California Secretary of State's office and the post process that Jenny referenced. Um, but just first, Rock the Vote is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization um, who empowers young people to step up and claim their voice in the political process. And for the past 23 years now, we've been registering and engaging millions of voters each year. But one of our major priorities has always been to simplify the voter registration process through tools and technologies and make it more available um, to young and all voters across the country. Uh, and we have built some new tools which are really exciting and we want to share them with you today. Uh, so next slide. The tool that I'm going to talk about is called a widget. We call it the OVR widget, Online Voter Registration Widget. And um, according to the great source of Wikipedia, which it's our small applications that are installed on a website, um, basically a little, a little button on your website that can fetch useful information and display it there in place. Um, next slide. But rather than tell you about it, I'm just going to show you. Um, this button right here that says register to vote that you're seeing on the screen, that's the widget. Um, you can design that to look any way you want. But this widget is free and available for anyone to use. Uh, and you can embed it right onto your website, and it will guide your visitors through the voter registration process. So really allowing any community organization, university, anyone with a blog, a website, um, to provide voter registration to your members, your clients, or any of your website visitors year-round. Um, obviously, you could always just put a link to the California Secretary of Web uh, State website, but we have these tools as well, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about them. So next slide. When you click on the tool, a registration form will come up, and it looks like this. Uh, it's an overlay that actually stays on your, your actual website, but then starts walking the user through the, the voter registration form, asking questions to, to collect that information in a user-friendly way, and then populates the registration form on the back end for you. So next slide. So here's some of the advantages and, and opportunities with, with using this uh, online voter registration tool. It's, well, first, it's just really easy. You can just embed it right on your own website. Um, second, and one of the primary reasons that we've developed this is because we've found that for us, our users are, are more comfortable and confident when they're, state, when they're asked to register to vote from a trusted provider or source, so on your website, the place where you know, they're already going, a community that they're a part of. So it allows the user to stay there on your website and start this process. We've also helped guide applicants through the process, lots of tips along the way about what information is required, ensuring that the form gets filled out properly. Um, the data is entered in a really easy, user-friendly format. We're actually testing it daily to make sure that the completion rates and the error rates are 
well, completion rates going up and error rates going down. So you have a whole team of us here who are constantly improving that. Um, it works. We've put about 6 million people through the tool, and it's um, really exciting and, um, and you know, it, it's secure and trusted. It was actually just endorsed by the Bipartisan Presidential election Commission on Election Administration as the best practice and a tool that others should be using. Um, another thing that I think is really exciting about the tool is that when somebody uses it to start their voter registration process or fill out the voter registration form, they can also opt in to receive ongoing information about elections. So they're not just getting registered to vote, but can opt into a service that we provide where they will get reminders around every registration deadline, every election, and basic information about times, locations, where to go, um, deadlines, and help usher them through the elections process. Um, so next slide. And here's where it gets really exciting. So normally in most states, it works in every state across the country, uh, it would produce a PDF of your voter registration form to print and mail in. But California is like incredible. We're really excited about this. There's a very special thing that we'll be rolling out. Um, we're in final testing of it right now with the Secretary of State's office. So stay tuned for the announcement. But here's a preview of what it'll look like. If you are a California registrant and you start filling out this registration form through the widget and it no notices you're in California, it will say, wait, hang on, you're, we, we know you're in, in California. We can actually send you over to the Secretary of State site to complete your registration completely online without having to print, sign, or mail it. Um, we did this through building, um, well, through the Secretary of State's office, building a post system which allows us to submit the, the applicant and the data they've already filled out electronically over to the state so that they can continue the registration process on the Secretary of State's website without having to re-enter any of their information. Um, and with the new upgrades with uh, the language, the accessibility, the, the options to use the new California tool on mobile and tablets, it will be a seamless process over to the California website um, and, and, and hopefully you know, tons of users will, will start at Rock the Vote or with any of your organizations. You can promote these tools to your users and then we'll get them over to the Secretary of State's off site with all of their data to complete that process fully online. Um, so this is really an exciting um, movement and opportunity. And the very last slide, uh, if you want to get your own tool, it is free. Um, you just go to rockthevote.com slash partner. You can customize it, start spreading the word, and even track your progress. So again, huge congratulations and thanks to the California Secretary of State's office and Jenny for all of your work. And hopefully these tools will allow each of your organizations to promote registration to your constituents, um, and then we'll get them through these tools seamlessly over to the Secretary of State site. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Heather. Um, great. And we'll just jump right in. Uh, Emily? Okay. Nope. Sorry. Can you hear me now? I was trying to go off mute. Perfect. Okay. Great. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emily, and I'm the Executive Director of CalPERG, the California Public Interest Research Group. Um, we're a statewide public interest organization with 40 years of working to um, encourage participation in the democratic process. And in particular, we um, have been, um, we actually have a student funded, student directed organization, CalPERG Students, that's comprised of a bunch of college campus chapters around the state, and um, have just a long history of working to register young people and um, do peer to peer outreach to get them to the polls. And so we're um, the biggest advocates of the Rock the Vote tool. Um, we've partnered with Rock the Vote for years now on voter registration and um, GOTV outreach to young people. And so I wanted to take, use my five minutes to tell you a little bit more about our experience working with colleges to do that. Next slide. Um, so in 2012, we were so excited that um, Jenny and the rest of the team at the Secretary of State's office was able to make a, um, at least a crude online voter registration tool happen in um, the month leading up to the voter registration deadline. We, um, so we had literally one month before the October 2012 deadline. We built a um, CA studentvote.org website where we hosted a tool 
and um, created partnerships with colleges and universities around the state to promote online voter registration. And um, so just again in that one month, we were able to get more than 27,000 students from over 250 different college campuses um, registered to vote through our CASTudentVote.org tool. So um, we're, um, again, partnering with colleges and universities around the state to do that again in 2014. Um, and so next slide. Um, I um, am on the phone to just share a few of our own outreach tips. Obviously, some of these will be um, key, are kind of a little more specific to colleges and universities, although I believe they most would be applicable to community organizations as, as well. Um, so our first tip is um, that um, emails, particularly getting an all-campus email sent out um, to the student body of a college or university was the number one, has been the number one most effective way to get young people registered to vote quickly and easily. Colleges and universities are already required to provide voter registration opportunities to their student bodies. And so we're offering this, you know, we've been encouraging colleges and universities to offer this uh, to, as to students as one more way that they can register to vote. Um, we found the most success when those emails come from a trusted, known um, source, so for example, either, either the chancellor of the university or potentially the student body president or someone else from the university who's well known on campus. Um, our second tip is that you don't just want to send one email. In fact, um, we've done three emails at a lot of um, colleges and universities as well as to our own list. And um, it definitely, you know, especially within the week leading up to the that's a typo, not the election day, but the voter registration deadline, um, in, in particular one or even two on the day of the, um, of the deadline to encourage people to register to vote. All three of those emails will be really effective at getting responses. We typically see about a 2% response rate every time an all-campus email goes out, regardless of the type of campus community and regardless of whether or not it's the first, or the second, or the third email. In fact, we typically see the highest responses on the voter registration deadline. So that's one, you know, one set of tips for emails is definitely send them from a trusted source and don't, um, don't be shy about sending out more than one. Um, the second is that we um, encourage colleges and universities as well as student organizations, faculty departments if they're um, interested and um, to, to all um, post uh, the tool the widget, <laughs> um, to use Heather's terminology, on um, heavily trafficked home pages. Um, and this is again a, a big advantage, like Heather said, you could post just a link to the voter registration website, um, but the CASTudentVote.org tool is a, is a much more prominent button that um, will typically get um, a much higher response rate. Um, we in fact have been partnering with colleges and universities so that you can actually um, like the school's colors and logos um, can be integrated into the widget. Um, so that's my second tip is to post, um, post a widget on the website, post a link to the web page, use the widget if um, possible. We highly encourage it and make sure they're on websites that get heavy web traffic. And then um, the, other, the third way um, that we've used to do outreach is through social media. Um, we've encouraged colleges and universities to post a link to the CASTudentVote.org tool to their official Facebook and Twitter feeds. Um, it's also a, a feature of the Rock the Vote tool that someone, a student who registers to vote will be prompted to share a link uh, on their own Facebook um, pages. And so we've been able to see um, just through, we estimate just by looking at um, Facebook traffic, that we get an additional person registered for every two Facebook posts from students that link to our CASTudentVote.org tool. Uh, so those are my um, outreach tips. And then my messaging tips are um, that you know, we see the best responses just focus on the timeliness and ease of registration. I'm over my time, so I'm going to um, stop right there. Thank you, Emily. Um, and we have uh, Deanna. Good morning, everybody. This, I'm Deanna Kitamura. I'm with Asian Americans Advancing Justice Los Angeles. I'm going to be talking about what community-based organizations can do to spread the word. And uh, b b before I get into that, let me just give you a little bit of information about my organization. 
uh, at uh, Asian Americans Advancing Justice Los Angeles is a civil rights organization devoted to issues affecting the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander communities. We work on a variety of issues, and one of them is voting rights, especially as it relates to language access for limited Eng English proficient voters. And we're very excited about the, the updated uh, um, online voter registration portal because it has the eight Asian languages, as Jenny mentioned. Can we go to the, the next slide, please? And so here's a, a few suggestions in terms of how to spread the word. Since Heather and Emily already talked about the link into portal as well as social media, I'm not going to go into that. But one of the ideas we have is to just post a flyer, if, especially if you have a lobby or an area that is, has a lot of foot traffic, whether it's clients or members or maybe even a large staff. I'm going to show you a sample of a flyer in a moment. The other idea is to add the online voter registration information to your current work. The one that makes the most sense is if you're doing voter engagement work. And it doesn't have to be, be about, maybe you're not doing registration specifically, but you can still provide education to people about the new online voter registration website. Maybe they need to read register, or maybe they would be interested in, in getting other folks in, uh, registered. So, so um, we would suggest that you add it to to voter engagement work. But also think about other areas where you're trying to empower empower people. So, for example, in, we provide um, citizenship classes so that folks can, can become citizens. And part of the classes, one of the classes, talks about your rights as a citizen and your duties as a, as a citizen. And what we're going to do is to incorporate a discussion about the online voter registration website and so that when they become citizens, when people become citizens, they know that they can easily register to vote. And so anytime you're doing any sort of empowerment work, we suggest that you add uh, information about the online voter registration website. And also just spread the word to your network. A lot of we know that community based organizations have a large network, whether it's with other community based organizations, it might be media contacts, or you might have very close relationship with government agencies, um, religious institutions or businesses and chambers. And so um, we have a sample letter that you can send to those folks with our sample uh, with, with a flyer. And so can we uh, go to the next page, please. And so here is one of our sample flyers. Uh, I'll show you the link to where you can find it. It's in Word, so you can change it. This particular flyer is geared to, to potential voters who may be limited English proficient. And so it, it not only talks about the, the availability of the different languages, but it, also talks, it, but it also provides some basic information about, about registering to vote. Um, and so I mean, obviously you can tailor it to however you think would work for you, the audience that you're, you're targeting. So as Jenny mentioned, accessibility has been improved, and now you can register on a mobile device. And so we would recommend that if, if those are ideas that would speak to your audience, then that's, that would be a way that I would tailor it, modify this and tailor it so that, it, that um, a flyer would speak to the correct audience. Um, next. Next uh, slide, thanks. And so here is the sample letter that we have on our website, and it is also in Word, so you can modify it. And it's just asking your network to, to spread the word. And again, you should tailor it to however you see, see fit, but um, our focus is on the availability of the, of the languages. Next slide. And this is just a link to where you can find our, the sample letter as well as the sample flyer. It's at our website. Um, I know in a moment we're going to be talking about a toolkit that was created by the FOS members, but this is a toolkit that my organization um, created, and the focus is, is on language access. And there's other flyers and fact sheets that you can find there as well regarding issues um, that that affect voters who aren't fully proficient in English. So that's the end of my presentation. Great. Thank you, Dina. Um, so now we're going to go to uh, the, um, the toolkit that uh, Deanna mentioned that the members of California Elections Maine and 
this is where you can find it, but um, Jen uh, is going to walk us through. So, Jennifer? Hi, everyone. Good morning. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and hopefully you'll be able to see the website itself. So this is the link for the main page for the future. Oh, by the way, this is Jennifer Bay from the League of Women Voters of California. Um, it's a pleasure to be with all of you today. So the future of California elections.org, if you go to that website, you'll see this home page right here. And in the latest news, if you want to scroll down, you can read more. And it talks about the webinar that we're on right now and a little bit more background information of online voter registration in California. So here is the Community Outreach Toolkit. If you click on the Community Outreach Toolkit, you will be able to download the document. And it's also in, P it's also in Word, so you'll be able to modify it. And this is what it looks like. So it gives the background information on the, on the front page, and I wanted to make sure to do a special shout out to the following organizations, Asian Americans Advancing Justice Los Angeles, American Civil Liberties Union of California, CalPER, Green Mining Institute, the League, and of course Rock the Vote, for putting this toolkit together on behalf of the future of California elections. Uh, the previous presenters did a great job giving an overview about how to get this information out to our communities. And this toolkit goes into a little bit more information information and samples of how you can get this information out. So the table of contents covers all of that. Um, we're excited to let you know that we have a sample press release in both English and in Spanish. And the uh, Asian American languages should be coming out early next week. So that will be updated on the FOS website as well. So please feel free to modify this press release. And uh, we all know that, especially with ethnic media, if you tailor this in your in, in language, uh, many times they'll often reprint. So we, if anything, want to make sure that this information gets out to our respective communities. So in the sample press release, we even provide some sample quotes and uh, some data that you might want to reference. And then, of course, here is the sample press release in Spanish. And then once the sample press release uh, is available in the Asian languages, we'll make sure to post that up as well. So in addition to the press release, we also have a sample email that you can send to your community organizations. Uh, once again, feel free to tailor, but this is pretty much everything you need to know about California online voter registration. It covers you know, the addition languages, uh, the imp improved mobile interface, and um, how to go about <coughs> spreading the word. So this is a sample email. And then we went over some tips on how we can share this with our respective communities. Uh, once again, via website, if you want to go ahead and put the online voter registration link directly to your website. We have email blasts and listservs. You can send this information out. Uh, send it out as a flyer or a pamphlet. And then in, if you are a grassroots organization that do voter registration or voter education or get out the vote on the ground, we definitely encourage folks to uh, to, to use this as, a, as, a, as another, um, as more information as you go out and do your phone banking or door knocking to let folks know that they can register online. Then there's the newsletter, and then also figuring out how you can outreach to other local community institutions, such as your local businesses, your faith institutions, clubs, language schools, and other, en other en entities that may make use of this tool. Of course, there's social media. Uh, you can also host a webinar just like what we're doing right now and uh, let your stakeholders know about this tool. And then as I mentioned before, ethnic media. <coughs> we have some sample social media quotes that you may want to use for Twitter or Facebook, as well as an image that you might want to share. And then lastly, this provides instructions on how to add the voter registration tool to your website. Uh, of course, if you run into any problems, there is a website link here that you can contact the Elections Division's web developer from the Secretary of State's office. Or option two, contact Rock the, Vo Rock the Vote and uh, co-brand the tool and have this available on your website as well. And this is the image once again. And that's it for the toolkit. Great. Well, oh, let me go back and re <laughs> stop sharing my computer. <laughs> 
Thank you, Jen. Well, thank you to all of our presenters. Uh, We had a challenge of keeping all of this great information to five minutes, and so thank you to all of our presenters for doing such a great job. So I'll I'll do the applause for everybody. Um, And now we're going to go ahead and open it up to Q&A. And I apologize now if we can't uh, get to everybody's questions. Our presenters have agreed to stay on a little bit over the hour. Um, So if you have questions, please go ahead and raise your hands now, um, or feel free to you send them via the chat feature, and we'll try to get in through all of your questions today. Uh, and if not, make sure you put them in the chat feature, and we can follow up with you afterwards to get an answer to your question. So, um, Doug, I believe you had a question queued up via the chat. I did. Um, have a question for uh, Jenny or Heather or both. Um, will the Secretary's Office be able to track how many registrations originated through um, the Rock the Vote widget? Well, this is Heather. On our end, we will know how many people um, go through our tool and are then uh, sent over to the Secretary of State's website. And this is Jenny. We will also know because um, the IP addresses that Rock the Vote is using are are permitted under the written agreement with our office so that they can be a posting entity. So we'll be able to see in the aggregate um, how many come over. What we don't have the ability to do is track that individual all the way through the process. I don't believe we have a system set up to then notify the posting entity whether the person ended up on the voter rolls. Um, so for you know, if you're an organization that's doing outreach and you're trying to track it all the way through and see if they're going to be on the voter list in their local polling place, you'd have to buy the voter record and match up the personal data you've collected with the voter roll data. Right, which at Rock the Vote will do and provide as a service back to any partner using our tools. Great, thank you. I have a question from Sia and then one from uh, David Wolsey. Uh, yes, um, I have a question about the process of what happens after the online registration request goes to the Secretary of State's office. What is the average time it takes for that registration to show up on the local uh, county uh, list of voters? where the voter could go out over and accept, and find out if he's registered or not. This is Jenny with Secretary of State's office. That definitely varies by county and it varies by time of year and whether it's an election year or not. Well, um, I'm talking about close to the deadline. So if it's close to the deadline and you're talking to people and you're doing outreach, you want to tell them to give give this whole process a few days. Certainly submitting an electronic application is much faster than submitting a paper application because the county staff does not have to input that data. They they receive and import that data right into a staging table where they review it and then after they do all the regular verifications just like they do with paper applications, um, the the voter is placed on the voter roll. But that verification process does take some time. And depending on the county and depending on their workload, again, and if it's right on the deadline day, you know, probably it's not going to be processed within 24 hours, right? They're going to need a few days. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And David uh, Woolsey? Yeah, first of all, thanks very much for the presentation. It was uh, really informative. I was just hoping to get uh, a copy of these slides if it's possible. Uh, yes, yeah, so the, the presentation, uh, the full recording will be available um, on our webpage later on, and uh, I'll follow up with the presenters for their, for their presentations. But the full recording of this, of this presentation will be online. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Any additional questions for our panelists? Um, I have one. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, could you once again state um, your web address so that we know where to go to find the uh, presentations and recording? Yes, it is www.futureofcaelections.org backslash C-O-V-R. Okay, thank you. I have a question from uh, Joanna Cuevas. Hi, uh, yes. Uh, just one last question uh, for Jenny about the rollout for VoteCal and sort of the timing on when um, the Secretary of State's office thinks that might be available in, multi- in all 10 VRA languages so that voters can actually check and see uh, where they're registered and, and um, look, look up their status. Yes, so, the, so that last slide I showed 
showed some components that are coming in the future, but so VoteCal and the redesign of the website that's coming with VoteCal will certainly have all of the things that you see now. So it'll have all ten languages. It'll have the accessibility features. Um, but it's going to have these improvements that I showed you on the slide that you see here on top of that. Great, thank you. Uh, any additional questions for our panel? Great. Well, thank you everyone. I uh, just uh, wanted to thank all, all of our panelists for making time to join us today and for sharing this information. Um, also to all of our participants. Uh, again, we're going to have uh, a follow-up email letting you know where to get access to this recording. And uh, please help us promote uh, this tool, this great tool for California's democracy. And please feel free to make use of that uh, toolkit that we have uh, online and make it your own. Uh, it's downloadable in a Microsoft Word format, so you can edit it um, and take parts as you need it. Um, as Jen mentioned the Asian languages will be available next week, and we'll put those up on your web, our website as well. Um, if you have any additional questions, uh, last chance. You know, Astrid, let me mention one more thing. This is Jenny. Um, we're in the process of creating special register to vote buttons in all those ten languages. Um, it may take us a couple of weeks to get that done. Um, so certainly download and use the register to vote button that we have now. But but we are that is coming. And we're all devel also developing buttons for each of the NVRA agencies to use. Um, so that we are still adding some new things that you'll, be, that you'll see, and we'll just communicate out through future of California elections as we add new things. Great. Well, again, thank you, everyone. Thank you to our panel. And uh, we hope to catch you again in the future, future webinars. As I said, this is our first uh, webinar for the future of California elections, and we love feedback as to how this process went. We always like making our events better um, to make sure we're getting out um, useful information to, to everyone. So thank you, and uh, everyone have a great weekend. Thank, thank you. you.